Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's so good to have you join me here today. Now today I wanna to take the time to look over America's population pyramid and kind of maybe glean some useful, interesting information as it relates to our videos in the past and to kind of see how a country's population pyramid, such as that of the United States, reflects its destiny and its future and what things are happening within the greater scope of that society. So in order to understand this, let's go all the way back to the 1950s and play around with this awesome tool, which by the way, I will link in the description below so you can play around with this too and nerd out just like I am right now. So let's take a look at the 1950s and look at America's population pyramid. And what does this pyramid tell us? Well, it tells us two major things. One, it tells us that there's a lot of young people born into the 1950s, which would become known as the baby boomer generation. Now you can see here, this pyramid is very heavy at the bottom with a little narrowing here, which can be directly correlated to the Great Depression with a with an expansion out here, which again could be contributed to the 1920s. So if you're born 20, if you're 25 and you're born the and you are living in the year 1950, that means you're born into the Roaring Twenties, which was ironically another post-war boom, the party that was never ending and where people drank a lot of champagne. But eventually they got a hangover and they had truly a once-in-a-lifetime event in the form of a Great Depression. Now, that word doesn't really mean much to people of our generation, as we'll get to in the, here and in the discussion, because we've already had like four or five once-in-a-lifetime events that just keep happening back to back. So at this point, it's just a matter of reality that crazy things are just going to keep happening in our world. Now, as you look at here, the population band narrows, and it directly correlates to the time that people were being born into the 30s, which is right in the middle of the Great Depression. And this was truly a terrible time for the United States and for the world in general. Uh, this is the time that we saw the rise of fascism in Europe, uh, economic collapse in the United States, massive unemployment, and again, uh, starvation and crop failure in a lot of parts of the planet as well. And this is what we got to take a note here is that I believe this is just my personal opinion based on the analysis I'm performing right now is that a population pyramid is directly tied to a nation's economics. And the reason I believe this is because again, look at the Great Depression era. If people had the same access to resources that they did in the 1920s, or at least the belief to to that they had the kind of wealth that they did in the 1920s, then people would use that wealth to build houses, to build families, to buy goods, and then to continue improving the living conditions and having kids all at the same time that they would then be born into a society that would have a bright and positive outlook for the future. And this is what happened in the 1950s. There was a lot of money and a lot of resources and a lot of belief in the United States. And you could say this was a good fuel era because the United States had come out after winning World War II, and while Europe was completely down and out and had to rebuild itself, the United States had a relatively untouched industrial sector. And at this point, it became a superpower on top of this. And this, you can see this trend continuing on for a couple of years. And I believe here, if you'll take a look at 1965, it continued all the way into the 1960s, whereas in the 1960s, early 1960s, late 1950s, there was a recession and this growth came to a slowdown. And you had a, a correlation here again where the band started to narrow. And the reason it started to narrow is because this would be the start of one, a cultural revolution where society tended to become less conservative. So people tended to want to have, not, not do what their parents did in the 1950s, which is like start having kids. And additionally, this was the start of the era that would become known and maybe historically would get known as the great deindustrialization of the United States, where factory jobs are slowly being shipped out of the United States uh, to other countries. And America started becoming a lot less competitive with the kind of production and manufacturing that it had, eventually leading to the Rust Belt, as we call it today. So cities like Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, that, that saw real, huge growths in the 1950s and 1960s were slowly starting to wither away. And this, again, is said that you can see a narrowing of the band here because you have a lot of folks in the 1960s and 1970s who kind of, like I said, they, they bucked the old conservative trends of their society. Um, and the population growth is still happening though here because you, you have several factors. Even though you have a narrowing of the band here, you can also say that because of things like immigration and because of a greater increase in life expectancy and improvement in healthcare, people just live longer. So you still have people around in the society at the top levels here in higher age groups. 
But again, we're looking at the bottom of the pyramid here. We see this narrowing happen in 1970s, 1975, and 1980. And why is that? Well, this is the stagflation era, and there was a lot of things happening at this time. In addition, you also had a major factor influencing on people's minds, and that was the Cold War. So a major existential crisis to boot on top of very unsustainable economic situations during this time period. And this is the period where you had pretty much the forgotten generation of American history, the Xers being born right into this era. Uh, who to this day have been largely forgotten, kind of left out of political power as the boomers here who are like then in their 20s would have started assuming positions of political and social power, which they still hold to this day. Uh, and then you get to 1985, and this was like right around after the call back to traditionalism in the Reagan era, and conservatism becomes a major economic policy. And you started seeing a lot of deregulation in this era, which contributed to economic growth. Additionally, you saw a rise of evangelism and a callback to the traditionalism that you saw in 1950s. So people were more inclined to have kids, uh, maybe as a view of religious duty or maybe other factors as well. But you had a growth in this period, uh, which went into the 90s. And this is where you started to see a, a new growth of a new industry in the form of the tech sector, which created new jobs in America was the leader. And again, this was the, the tail end of the Soviet Union as well. So America was becoming the premier dominant superpower. And in the 90s, the Soviet Union did collapse. So again, the United States continued to see growth at the bottom of the pyramid, which again could be correlated to the conditions of that time. And then come around the 2000s and the first of many once in a lifetime collapses for the millennial generation. This is the period where you saw the dot-com crash and instantly you see a reduction in population growth after the roars of the 90s. And you look at 2005, somewhere in here 9-11 happened as well as the dot-com crash. And then you go into the 2000s and you kind of see that you kind of had the slight growth here in a couple of these age groups, particularly in 2005, you kind of had a slight growth here because of the housing market, but again, another once in a lifetime crash hits and you start seeing the narrowing again. The difference here is, is the reason it doesn't narrow so much is because even though the do, even though these two crashes happened, both the dot-com crash and uh, the 2008 housing crash, real estate in the United States at this point was relatively cheap, which brings us to, to the year 2015, where you start seeing this narrowing again and you start seeing it in 2020. And that is because, again, people who are then getting into their 20s in the year 2010 and 2015 didn't have the same kind of access to the resources that their parents did during that exact same time to start building equity and capital and wealth during this era. So therefore, they were not going to have kids because the one fundamental factor of an industrialized society such as the United States or Japan or Europe is that people are a lot less hesitant to have children if they are not going to be able to provide for that children. And it's also harder to be able to date somebody in our society if you don't have a certain base of financial means, which makes it harder to, you know, said like to go out and like to find somebody. If you don't have a house or you have to, or you're struggling to pay bills because you have to work two or three extra jobs, which doesn't leave you a whole lot of time. So this is a combination of many social and cultural and economic factors that you see here. Uh, kind of shows us that people are just generally in our, ca our category aren't have as many kids to contribute to the base of this population pyramid because they don't have as many access to the resources as people did in the 1980s with cheaper housing like in 1980s or 1950s in the post-war boom. And you kind of start seeing this narrowing. Now, this is where I diverge from the projection number and the reason i do is because you see a relatively linear situation here the one part of this i agree with is that people at, at the age of 100 plus the, apparently there's going to be almost 2 million people at this point this could be true um our, our our technology keeps improving healthcare keeps getting better and there's going to be a lot more people that are going to live a lot longer but this chart doesn't account and nor should it honestly if, it, if it's a this is just a projection based on current trends it doesn't account other factors that might skew this to make our chart here, instead of making it look as linear as it does, to make it look closer to a society that's already sped run through this problem in the country of Japan. Uh, now, Japan has a very, very interesting uh, population pyramid where it's extremely top heavy. 
And this was actually kind of like a major trap for this country because in the 1990s, it experienced a major economic collapse, similar to what we did as a result of overinflated housing prices, like we did in 2008. And But the housing and other factors still in Japan are not very cheap for most people, at the very least not in the areas where the jobs are at. And additionally, a lot of resources in that society are being spent taking care of elderly which consume a lot of healthcare resources in that society, leaving fewer resources for the development of younger folks. And additionally, Japan has a very interesting, and as well as us, a very interesting work culture that are that is more similar than we would like to admit, where people work longer hours, don't have as many benefits or free time to raise or have families. Thus, you see this narrowing, and the United States is going in a similar direction. For example, in the United States, I am a religious person. I, to this day, I don't understand how... Most folks are okay with making people work on Sundays instead of giving folks the chance to go to church on Sunday to build a greater and stronger community. That's just my opinion. And that's one of those simple things that like if if taken out of society, if there's just this one day where we still have to work and do stuff, it just doesn't leave us a whole lot of time to form community, to form families or do all these things. And there's a cultural aspect in this. And I don't think this chart reflects it. And again, it would be hard for it to reflect. So we just have to look at countries similar to us who have already went through this experience, such as Japan. Um, you have other countries that uh, that are kind of getting into interesting positions as well and going forward because you got countries like China, uh, which again also have this demographic pressure as people are getting older. And But you have other countries that are actually looking like they will become very dominant, countries like Turkey, which have very healthy population pyramids. But the biggest one, and I said, maybe I'll get on this and talk about the future countries uh, that, that will be future superpowers, which I think is actually going to be interesting to me. Is like I think a lot of them are going to start coming from uh, your developing nations that have a lot of population growths. Uh, countries like Kenya, for example, that have a very, very pyramid-like structure to their population. So I'll, I'll actually just, uh, look at this topic a little bit more and just kind of see what we have going forward with a lot of these countries because it's kind of interesting like I, I believe like a healthy mark of a society is positive population trends and we've seen in the past when america was at its strongest and its healthiest we had positive demographics when america was weakening or things have happened in that society like in the 1970s and the great stagflation era or right now that we're living today you see a narrowing at the bottom which is a precursor to something happening in that society i mean just look at russia for example you know, you can look at the 90s era here and you can see that the collapse of the Soviet Union greatly contributed to the narrowing of this population band. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward with countries like the United States. Anyway, hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'll do a couple more videos just, just playing with this awesome and cool tool. Really appreciate it if you made it this far and I'll talk to all of you later. Right, let's take a look here what America looks at then essentially 433 million people. So Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for stopping by.